As someone who personally struggled with THC weed addiction for several years of my life and experienced firsthand symptoms of psychosis, depersonalization, and manic behavior as a direct result from my weed smoking, today's topic is super important and very, very close to me. A lot of the information you're going to hear in today's video regarding sleep is derived from an interview with world sleep expert Matthew Walker when he was featured on the channel Impact Theory with Tom Bailu. So I've linked that interview in the video description in the pinned comment if you guys want to check that out in its entirety. Today, we're going to be talking about the impact that weed consumption, specifically THC consumption, has on sleep, and we're going to talk about that's potential correlation to symptoms of psychosis, schizophrenia, and other mental health disorders. Again, all things that I experienced throughout my active weed addiction. And guys, before I get into this, I'm going to be reading off of notes because this is a complicated topic. Weed directly disrupts our REM sleep. So for those of you who aren't aware of what REM sleep is, this is one of the stages of our sleep cycle called rapid eye movement sleep. And this is the state of dreaming. And this stage of sleep has been found to be extremely important. And it has two primary purposes. Uh, one is creativity. And two, Matthew Walker described REM sleep as emotional first aid or overnight therapy for our brain, for our traumas, for our day-to-day -day experiences. So let's talk about creativity first because a lot of people are under the impression that weed actually really makes them more creative or helps with creativity. And based on the literature out there, that's absolutely not true. I believe that to be one of the lies or one of the false perceptions or facades that that addicted voice in our brain has us convinced of. And I'll tell you why right now. REM sleep connects and creates new associations between what you have learned in a day and current and past memories. These associations create solutions to once impenetrable problems. That is a direct quote from Matthew Walker, the world sleep expert. Now, what he's saying is we go through a bunch of different experiences day to day, and we learn things, we create memories from those things, and then we store them somewhere in our brain. And it's during sleep, our brain makes the associations and the connections between those learned experiences and memories. And this is how we find solutions to problems. This is where we derive creativity from. If you think about the basic expression of dream big, chase your dreams, follow your dreams, weed literally kills your ability to dream. What do you think weed addiction is doing to a person long term when it comes to accomplishing their dreams, when it comes to building their dreams? That's kind of a metaphor, but there is a lot of truth behind that. Weed addiction is the constant creation of new problems, okay? When we're addicted to weed, we run into financial problems. We run into relationship problems. We run into maybe um, law problems, right? Legal problems. We run into health problems, okay? Weed addiction is the creation of new problems. And on the same note, weed addiction is the disruption of REM sleep, which, provide us, which provides us with dreams that are literally meant to solve our problems. So addiction to weed not only creates new problems, but it's stripping our brain's ability to find and create solutions. And this becomes a massive, massive source of stress in a person's life. Here we are facing a problem. Maybe that problem is addiction. And here we are finding the inability to come up with solutions to these problems. That's really scary to think how weed is impacting that in the brain. Matthew Walker also says that REM sleep is important because he describes it as overnight therapy and emotional first aid, which is interesting because we hear so much about using weed for better mental health. And the literature right now out shows that that is just not true long term, that it's actually the opposite. And this may be the reason why. It's when you're dreaming in REM sleep 
This is the only time that your brain shuts off the neurochemical noradrenaline, which is essentially adrenaline, okay, for all intensive purposes. This is that fight chemical in your body. This is that thing that brings you from zero to panic mode, noradrenaline, okay? When you dream, your brain relieves your memories and daily events without the chemical noradrenaline. It voids you of the ability to have an emotional response to that memory. So when you're dreaming and you're going through a memory, your brain has stopped you from having the ability to go into panic, from having the ability to go into fear, from having the ability to go into anger. Memory without emotion is what the dream state is. How dreaming, this is how dreaming takes bad experiences and rounds out the sharp edges. Sleep is what allows us to face the bad things day to day and come up with solutions to those situations. So sleep is quite literally a detox of your brain and your memories. Weed prevents REM sleep. Weed is literally preventing this emotional healing and this emotional detox. Now, for those of you guys that are going to ask about PTSD and and what about that, we're going to talk about that at the end of this, okay? I believe that weed obviously causes psychosis and depersonalization in people. That's true. But why does that happen? And I think it has to do with how weed deprives us or starves our brains of REM sleep. What happens when you deprive your body of REM sleep for long enough? Your immune system function drops, your testosterone levels decline, we see increasing rates of depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation, and we also increase our risk of Alzheimer's disease and development of schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, and mental health disorders, symptoms of psychosis is what I mean, okay? That's what happens when you deprive yourself of sleep for long enough, but get it goes even further when it comes to psychosis and weed consumption, okay? A decrease in REM sleep has been proven to cause delusions and hus- uh, hallucinations. Hallucinations. It's not a word. Okay? Delusions are unusual beliefs about something, which I had a plenty of when I was under the influence of weed. And hallucinations, seeing things or hearing things that just aren't there. And these are common symptoms of psychosis or depersonalization, schizophrenia, okay? Decreased REM sleep results in those things. We know this for a fact. When the brain is deprived of REM sleep for long enough, it is believed that dream sleep is eventually forced upon us during our awake state. So if you starve your brain of REM sleep for long enough, dream sleep, eventually your brain says, screw you. I don't even care that you're awake. I'm going to put you into a state of dreaming. And this is where we see people who are sleep deprived of REM sleep, which trust me, someone who's been smoking weed for a very long time, there's a very good chance you haven't dreamt in years like I didn't. So you have become very, very sleep deprived of REM sleep, even though you're sleeping. So now when you're awake, okay, your body forces you into a dream state. And that dream state is what's believed to result in hallucinations and delusions and psychosis and depersonalization potentially being tied to that. Now you combine that with the stress of addiction that you're going through day to day and the lack of solutions that you're able to find to this addiction And you are at a super high risk of developing psychosis eventually. And this is why I think people say, well, Dr. Frank, I've been smoking for years and I never had psychosis. Why did this develop all of a sudden? You finally got to that point, is my opinion, my opinion, where you deprived your brain of REM sleep long enough that your brain is now forcing you into a dream state even though you're awake. Now, the question may become, what about sleeping meds? And according to Dr. Matthew Walker, okay, um, he states they're a bad idea for most people because they are sedatives. And sed- sedation is not sleep. 
And he says a lot of people with sleeping meds mistake a state of sedation for a state of sleep. And this has been linked to cancer and death. He also stated that according to the American Medical Association guidelines, sleep guidelines, whatever it is, that sleep medication should always be a last line of defense because of its negative impacts on things, because it's sedation, not sleep. I have the, uh, I'm going to guess that an indica induced state of sleep is also more comparable to sedation than it is actually restorative REM sleep. That's just my hypothesis on that. Now, people are going to say, okay, then what do you do? What about PTSD? What about that? What about weed for PTSD? Well, PTSD, when people sleep at night, is the overproduction of noradrenaline in the brain. So people have PTSD when they're sleeping at night, and their brain is able to turn off and go through this dream state without noradrenaline. In their case, that's not true. The idea, or I think it's been proven, is that these people are going through neuro, noradrenaline releases even while they're asleep. And one of the drugs that I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, you need to speak to your doctor about this stuff, is a blood pressure medication, paracetin, I believe is what it's called. I put it in the text below here. And it's a blood pressure medication that has been found to decrease noradrenaline in the brain, which has been shown to help people suffering from PTSD, which is leading to better sleep. So something to consider talking to your doctor about. Now, before you do any medications or anything, Matthew Walker made it very, very clear that one of the best things a person can do is hands down lifestyle modification and cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, PTSD, and sleep. He made it very, very clear that the literature shows that those are your some of your best options when it comes to sleep. And I have a lot of people who are quitting smoking weed and they say, I use it for PTSD. And according to all the literature, it looks like that might not be the best of ideas out there right now, okay? And they say, it's, there's nothing else that works. There's nothing else that I can do. How many doctors have you spoken to? How many cognitive behavioral therapies have you gone through? How many lifestyle modifications have you made? What effort have you put into resolving it or at least managing it? And I don't mean like, oh, I talked to two psychiatrists. They just told me, you know, keep smoking weed. This is addiction's way and it's modifying and it's taking advantage of one of the things that it knows it can to keep you hooked. In this case, PTSD. I would just challenge you guys to look for other solutions because that's no different from the person who says, Dr. Frank, I quit. I can't stop vomiting. My anxiety is out of control. My depression got worse. We all face challenges when we quit a drug, particularly weed. Because many of us, myself included, were using it as a crutch. We all face challenges when it comes to withdrawals. And I just urge you guys to seek solutions. Don't take one doctor's opinion. Don't just take my advice. Get out. Educate yourself on it. Learn about it. Put in the effort. Now, my last thing I want to say is if you're combining weed with alcohol and adult media content and nicotine before bed and energy drinks all of which have a negative impact on sleep. Caffeine having a negative impact. Nicotine putting your body into a state of fight or flight. Alcohol preventing your body from going into a state of deep sleep. Now you're smoking weed, which stops REM sleep. Now you're drinking alcohol to prevent deep sleep. Watching pornography, gaming heavily before bed, binging social media before bed, which I've fallen victim to all these things, okay? I'm not judging. What do you think that's doing to your health and your ability to solve problems in your REM sleep? It's something to think about. So I think if you're at risk of psychosis, if you've suffered it from it before induced by cannabis, it's, it's time to stop. And if you need help with that, we are launching our Living Weed Free in 2023 program. You can find information to that with the link in the pinned comment, the link in the bio, or in the video description, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have group coaching, and I have tons of free handouts, including a handout on sleep and weed in this video attached in any of those areas. So be sure to find me in one of those spots. Thanks for tuning in.